I'm pleased that we have here with us now uh, Natalia Koliada, General Director of the Belarus Free Theater. Welcome here in Prague, Natalia. Thank you so much. Uh, what is the current situation in Belarus for uh, the theater? Uh, it is uh, located underground in Belarus and um, all our actors, uh, directors, managers, they lost their jobs, uh, their education, uh, so they were dismissed from the university and uh, it's not possible to perform our performances in any public spaces. So uh, we just uh, rent apartments or private houses in order to perform our performances. So your creativity is quite uh, restricted? It's, a t it's totally restricted because we live in the dictatorial country and uh, it's not possible uh, to be legalized there. And uh, when we started to perform uh, in other countries, uh, representatives of the Belarusian embassy, they were coming to the organizers and saying that uh, this theater doesn't exist. So it's uh, just prohibition for the names and it's prohibition for the activities and uh, everything become political. Even if you make uh, performances based on uh, like any issue you choose, like it's religion, uh, World War II, uh, like, uh, national minorities, sexual minorities, if you make it, it will become political anyway. So it's possible that you will have problems because you take part in this conference? Uh, I'm not sure because I believe that uh, because of the advice of uh, President Havel, who is our patron uh, for the last four years, uh, who taught us to speak openly and loudly in order to change the society, uh, we used to speak openly and loudly because it's already for 15 years we live under dictatorship and if we keep silent it will be prolonged. And do you think that you will be able to apply some thoughts or inspiration from the conference in Belarus? I believe uh, this is one of the uh, best conferences on uh, art that we ever attended and uh, it really uh, brings a lot of thoughts and ideas uh, that should be revised and accepted and uh, I'm not sure that it would be possible to apply to in Belarus but uh, um, nowadays uh, but I, I think we could use this experience for making different artistic projects with our partners outside of Belarus. Is the internet restricted in Belarus? Uh, Belarus uh, is uh, on list of uh, the main ten enemies of internet and for example uh, in my case uh, I was making uh, monitoring on human rights violations in Belarus and uh, putting on uh, our main political uh, public political website charter97.org and uh, I was called to the uh, trial and I attended the trial and the judge uh, said that uh, we need to punish you now uh, even if there is no such an article in our criminal code. So if we establish a YouTube channel from the conference so this interview will be on YouTube also so is there a possibility that people in Belarus can see it? Yeah, there is a such possibility, uh, but it's, uh, we have a monopoly. It's uh, only state-owned operator who owns internet. So uh, it is just a matter of uh, uh, speed. Uh, it is a matter of uh, cleaning internet because it's possible, because the uh, Belarusian government, uh, they bought Chinese filters uh, for presidential elections in 2006. <laughs> and they use it actively <laughs> so you never know uh, whether you receive your message or your partner will receive your message or uh, you will get your partner email so sometimes it's coming like in parts sometimes you just don't have it the beginning or the end um, sometimes it just doesn't arrive so you just then you try to use mobile phones and sent uh, SMS, uh, but uh, mobile phones are bugged too, so it's, uh, everything is controlled.
Yes, so mobile phones networks are also flourishing in your country. So you as activists, you can use those networks to organize yourself and to become more active. Uh, first we used internet when we started, uh, but then uh, after a few arrests uh, we understood that uh, KGB they are reading internet blogs. Uh, then we started to put this information in English and uh, very uh, quickly uh, KGB organized a special department uh, with English speaking uh, specialists and uh, they started to filter this information. After that we started to use mobile phones and it was bugged too and uh, now we use uh, word of mouse. So we just come to some uh, cafes uh, and uh, pass to people and they pass to each other and uh, there is no problem with audience for our performance. We have a waiting list of 2,000 people who want to get the, to the performances. So we'll, we will find a way and uh, we do use the experience of uh, Czechoslovakia and Poland of the uh, communist dictatorship. If I understand correctly, Václav Havel is one of the inspiration for you. This is absolutely correct and we call him our teacher. Uh, so it's um, a real honor for us to have him with us and supporting us and uh, we performed uh, one of our performance generation genes where we talk about uh, prohibition on rock and roll and genes in the Soviet Union and it was transformed to the uh, current situation in Belarus. So if you wear jeans uh, and jeans ribbons you could be arrested too for this. Still in Belarus? Yeah. Like uh, before the presidential elections in 2006, many people got arrested for wearing jeans and jeans jacket and uh, wearing jeans ribbons. So they just went for, uh, to jail because of it. So, uh, and the biggest part of this uh, generation jeans performance is dedicated to Jan Pala. Uh, it's uh, one of the strongest uh, inspiration for everything we do, and still it's a very strong inspiration. Natalia, how Russia influences the uh, situation in Belarus? It's a very complicated question because uh, last September we had the parliamentarian elections and uh, it was not recognized by the OEC. But uh, tragically for us, uh, European Union uh, postponed its sanctions against uh, Lukashenko. And it was again postponed for nine months just about two weeks ago. And uh, the main reason for us uh, was European Union got scared of uh, Russian-Georgian conflict last August and uh, it's a very huge influence on the situation in, in Belarus because uh, suddenly we became just a buffer zone between EU and Russia uh, and uh, there is no discussion uh, on human rights violations in Belarus anymore. There is just discussion that how it is important whether for Russia to have Belarus or whether for European Union to have Belarus. And uh, it's absolutely clear that uh, it's a geopolitical conflict um, that we have now. And uh, it's uh, obvious after Russian uh, warning last August that after Georgia, Belarus and Moldova will be the next countries where it, it would be possible to have an invasion. Uh, so uh, it's a, one of the scariest moments for us when uh, you are becoming just a play card. Uh, and uh, it's, not, it's not the easy issue to solve now. And if before uh, this situation we had the hope for changes, uh, now it's more and more difficult for us to change it because uh, you just understand that uh, nobody cares about the situation in Belarus, but uh, you are just uh, staying in between uh, two forces that are playing their geopolitical game. Natalia, thank you very much for your time.